What's up everybody, I'm Finn McKenty. This is my second channel and this is your home for my Twitch highlights and my podcast. So if you like this and you wanna see more of that and you wanna join the live streams, there's a link to that in the description of this video. And with that out of the way, let's talk about one of my very favorite bands of all time, which is Pantera. I would say of all the bands that I've listened to in my life, Pantera's probably like top three they might even be the band that I have listened to more than anybody else in my life. Pantera, Blink-182, Hatebreed, and 311, I would say, are the four bands that I have listened to more than anything else. And out of those, I think if you were to look, maybe I have listened to Pantera more consistently over the years more than anyone else. Could be true. I don't know. They have been in the news quite a bit recently because... They are, I guess, kind of sort of getting back together. The lineup, as you guys may have seen, it is Phil on vocals, obviously, Rex on bass. And Rex is a more important member of the band than I think a lot of people realize. He did a lot of the songwriting and, you know, he's been a part of the band from the beginning. So it is those two guys from Pantera. Unfortunately, the two brothers, Vinnie Paul and Dimebag, obviously no longer with us. Very sad. Rest in peace to both of them. So the big question is, who can replace them? And it is Zach Wild from Black Label Society and Ozzy Osbourne on guitar is going to be replacing Dimebag, who I would say if anybody's going to replace Dimebag, Zach is the guy, right? I mean, like there's nobody on earth that can sound exactly like Dimebag because he has just like such an iconic style. But Zach is the guy. There's literally nobody else on earth who can fill that slot better than Zach. He's the guy. And Charlie Benante from Anthrax is on drums. Also a great choice. So that's it. That's the band. They apparently are going to be going on tour in 2023. Uh, I'm not sure what else they have planned, but apparently that's the deal. So I figured for anybody out there who maybe, you know, we've all heard Pantera, obviously, right? But maybe for anybody who hasn't, heard all the nooks and crannies, the deep cuts, isn't familiar with their discography, I thought, why not do a little deep dive into their discography and rank the Pantera discography from worst to best? So that's what we'll do in this video. As somebody who knows their discography inside and out, someone who has listened to Pantera thousands and thousands and thousands of times over the past 30 years, I will be your guide through their discography. Starting from worst... To best. Many of you may not know, they'd been a band for many years before they kind of blew up, before Phil Anselmo was even in the band. They put out their first album, Metal Magic, in 1983, with this amazing artwork on it of this badass panther with his weird sword. Pantera, of course, means panther in Spanish, so I guess that's where this came from. This is what Pantera sounded like in 1983. It's horrible. <laughs> Not good. People say it's glam. I would say it's more like classic metal. It's not really glam, but it's also not good. And this is not Phil on vocals. This is a guy named Terrence on vocals. Yeah, it's more like Judas Priest or something like that. I mean, in 1983, this was probably pretty cool. In a world of metal magic, this, it sounds like Jack Black, though he says metal. Metal magic. metal magic. Diamond. Diamond Daryl. They called him Diamond back then instead of Dime Bag, because, you know, Dime Bag means like a $10 sack of weed, which in 1983 in Texas, they probably put you in the electric chair for smoking weed. So they couldn't have anyone in the band with a name that referenced weed, so they had to call him Diamond Daryl. And then you can see Rex on bass and his... Uh, cool zebra print tights Vinny here doing the sun grab and then terrence on vocals terrence is not a very rock and roll name metal magic, metal magic. he's not even singing he's just like talking what happened to terrence that's a good question what did happen to terrence could have been scary terry or t-dog t-bone terrible terry Are you going to talk about what happened to the members and your experience during that time of, in your life? During this time of my life in 1983, I was probably hoping to watch G.I. Joe or Transformers because I was five. I was in kindergarten. That's what was going on in my life when this album came out. Here we go. Listen to this weird like King Diamond synth part. 
This sounds like Ghost, doesn't it? Listen to this. This sounds like Ghost, for real. The soundtrack to an acid trip where you ride the dragon to save the big titty maiden from the evil wizard. Exactly. Okay, so that's Metal Magic, which I would rate as their worst album. That's from 1983, featuring also this song, Ride My Rocket. This is a little bit more glam. Ride My Rocket. I think, uh, I think the rocket, I think he means his dick. I, I could be wrong. I don't know. I think he's referring to his penis. I said, well, I, you have a rocket ship? I'd love to ride it. And he's like, uh, not exactly. Oh, oh, well, in that case, I'm not interested. Thank you very much, sir. I bid you good day. The next one is their second album called Projects in the Jungle from 1984. This cover art is so bad. I can't even tell what's going on. Like... This looks like something you would get like at a thrift store painted by like some old lady in like a retirement home that took up painting at the age of like 72. The cowbell. I dated a cute metal chick in my early 20s who insisted that this was their best album. That was Cap. And this is, this is a little bit more glam. Sounds like a uh, wasp or um, slaughter. That sounds like slaughter is what it sounds like. Terrence does sound a lot better. This is full on glam. It's not great, right? I think we can all agree on that. So I would say Projects in the Jungle from 1984 is the second worst. There are some cool moments though. You can hear, I mean, Dimebag was good even back then. He was probably a teenager and he could fucking play even back then. It's legit. You can tell even back then he was something special, but Projects in the Jungle, not good. I would rate it as their second worst album. And then their third album with Terrence, which is I Am The Night from 1985, also not good, but at least, you know, they keep improving. Their first two albums definitely sucked, but they at least did keep improving. This is Hot and Heavy. Yeah, the album art is really incredible, isn't it? it? Sounds and looks like something that Jack Black would do for a joke. She said she want a piece of me. I've been known to blow my top. I love those roto toms. <laughs> Yeah, 80s horny rock. That's what it is. Hot and heavy. So this is still uh, with Terrence on vocals. Again, I would say this is bad, but it is better than their first two, in my opinion. So I would say, in order, this is their third worst album. Now, the first album with Phil on vocals was Power Metal. You can see here, that's Phil right here with the bullet belt and the denim vest. Vinny with the teased up hair and the beard. You know, it's unusual to have a beard in a band like this back then. But Vinny's just a beard kind of guy. Rockin' Rex and then Dimebag over here. They almost look like they were in like Sepultura or Sarcophago or something like that. And this is where they start to get a little bit heavier. Still not exactly heavy, but you can tell they're starting to kind of sort of sound like Pantera a little bit more. It's not good, but it's getting better. Power metal, which ironically is not a power metal album. Yeah, I love that font. This would be like uh, when you found out how to use the font menu in Word when you're a kid and you're like, ooh, I can make it look like it's electric. Rock the world. Terry's wife is a NASA director. Wow. I mean, this is a lot better. This still sucks. But this is a lot better than their old stuff, right? Yeah, it sounds like Judas Priest, right? This is, I would say, you know, kind of starting to sound like Pantera. This is the song Power Metal from the album Power Metal by Pantera. Like, that riff sounds a lot like the Art of Shredding. Like, that riff sounds like it could be on Cowboys from Hell, right? Yeah, Phil was a great vocalist in this style. 
Phil could totally do that like Judas Priest shit. You say you want some metal. What? There we go. Listen to that. Yeah, I mean, it's not, it's not the worst thing in the world. Like, I would never choose to listen to this, but it's not terrible, right? So I would say this is their fourth worst album. So far, we have gone in chronological order. This is from 1988. So from 83, 84, 85, 88, that got better and better and better and better. But here is where we break the sequence. It's no longer in chronological order because remember, this is worst to best. So I would say that after this album, their worst one, in my opinion, so number five in the worst to best sequence is their last album, Reinventing the Steel from 2000, which, you know, is definitely not the worst thing in the world, but of the sort of good Pantera albums, meaning the ones with Phil where they sounded like Pantera, I would say this is their worst one. It's not bad by any means, but it's not, it's not their best. I think this was the first single from it. Revolution is my name. You know, it's fine. The worst of the best, exactly. I remember buying this album the day it came out and I was pretty disappointed with it. It just sounds kind of uninspired, you know? It's not bad by any means. I don't know if they weren't getting along well at this point or, you know, if Phil was super into drugs or what it is, but it just sounds kind of uninspired. You know, it almost sounds like a Pantera cover band, kind of. Nothing wrong with it. It's just not great. You could do a lot worse than that, but it's not the best. Of this album, this is my favorite song on it. Yeah, it felt like they were going through the motions, exactly. But even a mediocre Pantera is still pretty fucking good. You know, I feel like that line from this song actually kind of sums up this album. There's nothing special about it. Yeah, it is a little bit stoner rock. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, Goddamn Electric is pretty good. I do like this chorus. Sounds like hardcore. So that is Reinventing the Steel. By no means a bad album. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying of the great Pantera albums, I think it's the least great. And speaking of great, the next one in the sequence, to me, is The Great Southern mm -hmm. Tread Kill from 1996, which is an interesting one because overall, I would say this is Pantera's heaviest album. For example, this is probably the heaviest song Pantera ever did. Suicide Note Part 2, this is pretty intense shit. Like, this shit is heavy as fuck. Listen to this. This is one of the nastiest fucking riffs anybody has ever written. And like, god damn it. Dimebag is the fucking best. Like, nobody writes better metal riffs than Dimebag. Period. End of story. If you disagree with that, you're a fucking poser. You don't know what you're talking about. Here's an example of it. Listen to how nasty this is. Nobody does it better. Uh, they have some other interesting songs. For example, I think uh, Floods is also pretty cool. It's kind of, I don't typically like these slow songs. This one hits really hard once it like kicks in. Listen to this loud on a system with like a nice sub. It hits hard. Cool riff. Nobody does those pinches better than Dime. Those pinches, man. Prime fucking dime bag. This song is pretty cool too. I don't know what this is tuned to, but it's super low. And this is from 96. Nobody was tuning this fucking low back then. Drumming too. I mean, Vinnie Paul is such a cool, like underrated drummer. So much groove. Good album for sure. But I would put this at five out of eight. Good, but not their best. So in the uh, top three, the third best is Cowboys from Hell from 1990, which is basically when Pantera got good. Up until that, they were like pretty good, but this is when they got great. I still listen to this all the time. One of the best fucking metal songs ever written. 
This video was amazing, so much energy. This is just everything great about Pantera. It's got metal, it's got hardcore, it's got a little bit of like ZZ Top Texas Blues. So good. I had this VHS, I used to watch it all the time. Bill's fucking stage presence, everything about this album and this song in particular. 10 out of 10 song. How many times have I seen him live? Only once. I think it was in between Cowboys from Hell and Vulgar Display. I don't remember exactly, but I saw them in a small theater and it was amazing. Avoid girls with a Cowboys from Hell tattoo. I That is good advice. A lot of other good songs on this album too. Everybody knows Domination, right? One nice little detail here about Pantera that I noticed around then, a lot of people didn't, is uh, they oftentimes, when there's a solo, they drop out the rhythm guitar because they wanted it to sound like they do live because with them only having one guitarist, obviously live, there is no rhythm guitar. And they did that on the records, which I thought was cool. Like you can hear the solo here. No rhythm guitar, it's cool. And then, of course, we know the iconic breakdown. That big reverby snare. Great moment. The video for this is amazing, too. Some other underrated songs on this album, too, that you don't hear people talk about as much. For example, The Art of Shredding. This is a fucking sick riff. What a riff. Underrated song. The problem is that there's some clunkers on this album too. The great songs are really great, but then you've got songs like this that it's like, eh, there's nothing wrong with this song, but this is kind of bland. Yeah, Medicine Man is kind of boring too. I mean, this doesn't suck. Yeah, this is totally right. Vinny Paul had the snappiest kick. It punched you right in the face, but was out before you even knew what hit you. Completely changed how drums were produced. That is totally true. Pantera pioneered that like super punchy, super clicky drum sound with like tons and tons of attack. They absolutely pioneered that. Anthrax was up there too, but Pantera really changed how metal drums sound. Like, this isn't bad, right? You know, this kind of thing, just kind of... It's okay. Also, The Sleep is another one that I would say is like, you know, not a clunker, but kind of boring. I mean, it's six minutes long, you know? Not bad, but do we need six minutes of this, you know? Now, Cemetery Gates is a song we have to talk about. Is it objectively good? I guess, um, but to me, this I hated this song. I still do. This is like a boring, like glammy butt rock ballad to me. I think it's weird that people love this song so much. This sounds like glam terror to me. I'm not into it. That's a cool riff, but does it need to be six minutes long? I don't know. I'm not into it. I don't love it. If you do, that's okay. But overall, Cowboys from Hell is a great album. I just feel like the great songs are definitely fantastic. Uh, but I think some of the clunkers kind of drag it down a little bit. That said, I do think it's the third best Pantera album, which brings us to the top two Pantera albums. It's between Far Beyond Driven and Vulgar Display of Power. And I think both of these are fantastic albums where I think you could credibly go either way with it. But for me personally... Uh, I would say that overall, the number two best Pantera album, in my opinion, is Far Beyond Driven from 1994. Now, the great songs on Far Beyond Driven are fucking great. For example, I'm Broken. What a fucking riff. So groovy. What a cool video, too. So, like, just raw and stripped down. You felt like you were right there in the practice room with them. That fucking drum sound, man, it sounds so good. And that's right. This debuted at number one on Billboard, which was crazy for like a, a metal band that was this fucking heavy. This is not like Alice in Chains. I mean, I love them, but they're not heavy or Pearl Jam or any of the other, that other stuff that was kind of like metal-ish, you know, Soundgarden. This is like a straight up metal band, heavy as shit, debuting at number one. This is like Pantera at their absolute best. So much groove. Phil is a beast. Great riff. 
I like those like 16ths on the hi-hat too. Vinny Paul does a lot of that stuff. Great song, and there's a lot of great songs in this album. Uh, I'm Broken is awesome. Five Minutes Alone, another popular one. I don't love this song personally, but I, I get it. Remember, this went to number one on Billboard, and listen to how heavy this is. Those cool, like, southern groovy riffs. I think a uh, very underrated Pantera song is Becoming. This was like the, really the beginning of these kind of like whammy pedal kind of riffs. Love this one. Vinny Paul was such a fucking incredible drummer. Like that double bass pattern was so fucking cool. Nobody was doing anything like that back then. People do it now, but he had groove when he did this kind of stuff. It wasn't like this like gent, like sounds like it's fucking programmed. He had groove when he did it. That ride, man, Vinny is just incredible. Pantera at their very best. I love this song. Another one, underrated Pantera song. This is the first song in the album. Remember, this is the first song on a Billboard number one album, and it's basically hardcore. I mean, listen to this shit. This is like the best fucking hardcore song ever written, basically. This is what every hardcore band wants to sound like, but none of them do. Because nobody's as good as Pantera. That ride pattern. It's so simple, but it's so good. And the breakdown. Great song. That's the album opener on a Billboard number one album. Another very, uh, I don't know. I mean, I guess everyone knows this song, but you don't hear people talking about this song as much as you do Cowboys from Hell or Domination or Cemetery Gates or This Love or whatever. Um, hard to call this underrated on such a like popular album, but still, listen to how fucking heavy this is. This could come out now and it would be heavy. You know, that's how ahead of the time it was. Nobody grooves like Pantera. No band before or since has grooved like they do. And it's like almost death metal vocals. There are a few vocalists who can sound as angry as Phil. Corey Taylor is the only one who comes to mind. Yeah, I mean, Bill is basically the template for every metal vocalist after him. Again, remember, this was this went to number one on Billboard. And listen to how brutal this is. And then they give us a little bit of breathing room. One of the best, I mean, just incredible. This is what every hardcore band wants to sound like. The problem is, the reason why I would say this is not their best album, it is an incredible album. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying it's a bad album. It's incredible. But the reason that I don't place it in the number one slot is because there are some songs that I would say are skips. For example, this. It's one of these songs that they have that's kind of just like, you know, these kind of long, I don't know, plotting kind of songs. You know what I mean? It's not a bad song. But it's like five minutes of this sort of just like, uh, I don't know. It never really goes anywhere for me. It has its moments, but it's too much just kind of build up for me. Or uh, Good Friends and a Bottle of Pills. Again, I would call this a skip. It's another one of these like kind of long songs where it makes me feel hung over to listen to this song, which is probably what they were going for. But um, not bad by any means but just not their best, which is why I would put Vulgar Display of Power, number one best Pantera album, in my opinion, like top three metal of albums of all time, right? I mean, this is like up there with Black Sabbath. This is my favorite Pantera song. First song on this album. It's like, this is such a fucking weird riff. 
Like, try to play this. Like, it's so weird. It's such a great example of how, like, nobody can sound like Dimebag except for Dimebag. It is so fucking weird and hard to play. It's such a strange riff. The drums are also really strange, too. Nobody really has those kind of locked in grooves like they do. It's a really weird song. And like the drums aren't really like metal drums. It's more like groovy, like ZZ Top Texas blues drums, you know? 10 out of 10 song. Walk, of course. I mean, this was their breakthrough song. Everybody knows this song, right? It's actually not my favorite song on the album. Maybe I'm just tired of it. It's a great song though. This song changed metal like almost overnight. Like instantly everyone wanted to do this like kind of groove, tough guy kind of thing. Everyone had a shaved head fill impersonator on vocals. Like it's hard to communicate how much of like a transformational song this was. And it was a huge hit for them because of Beavis and Butthead. Uh, it is a great song though. This is like almost exactly the size of the venue I saw them at in 91 or 92, whenever that was. I, I have the ticket, a photo of it somewhere. I saw them at this size venue, which was amazing. This Love, not my favorite song, because I'm not into ballads, but even then, it gets heavy at the end. Man, Phil's just so good. Nobody, like when Phil's at his best, nobody's better. Hollow is another, you know, another song that I'm not normally into because this whole song is just this, kind of boring. But the end, the end is heavy as shit. This is an underrated part. One of Pantera's best parts in my opinion. So even they're kind of like somewhat slower kind of ballads, still heavy as shit. And such weird rhythms, you know, you try to play that stuff. It's such strange rhythms. This is another one, uh, Rise is also an underrated song. This song is incredibly fucking hard to play. Try playing this, man. You can go find the tabs. Good fucking luck playing this, like, at speed, this tight. Good luck. This shit is incredible. This kind of like really tight syncopation, these kind of accents really just transform metal. And then here's another example of like I was saying before, how they dropped out the rhythm guitar behind the solo. It really makes the solo seem like so much more interesting and dynamic, right? It sounds way cooler on a lot of these songs where they drop out the rhythm guitar. Man, I know every fucking note on this fucking album backwards and forwards. 10 out of 10. There's no two ways around that. The reason that I would say this is their best album, even though like the best songs on Far Beyond Driven might be better than the best songs on Vulgar Display, maybe. Uh, but for me, Vulgar Display has zero skips. Every fucking moment of this album is a 10. I would say Enema of the State is also a no skip album. Guns N' Roses, uh, Appetite for Destruction is no skips. Like there's only a handful of albums for me that are no skips. This is one of them. And so for that reason, I would say that that is the best Pantera album. But I mean, really, Pantera is one of those bands where at least once they got good, like from Cowboys from Hell and on, all their albums are great. You can't go wrong. So if you have not listened to Pantera in detail, I would suggest that you do. There is a reason why they're considered, you know, one of the gods of metal. Like they're up there with Black Sabbath. You know, I mean, Black Sabbath are the goats. There's no question about that. They're the most important band. They invented metal. Everybody else like comes after Black Sabbath. But, you know, Metallica, Pantera, probably the two most important bands of metal after Black Sabbath. So if you have not done yourself the favor of listening to Pantera's discography in excruciating detail, I would suggest that you do. And that's the order that I would rank them from worst to best. You could probably skip the Glam Terra stuff. Skip their first four albums. You don't need to listen to that. But Cowboys and on all the rest of that, definitely worth listening to. So that is my two cents on Pantera. I think the rocket, I think he means his 